Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be addressing a massive plot point in Harry Potter, and that is, why on earth did Voldemort even want to kill the Potters? Why would he go out of his way to murder an unsuspecting family that posed no immediate danger to him? The answer to this question lies inside of the famous prophecy. The prophecy, of course, refers to the prophecy foretold by Sybil Trelawney in Hogsmeade Pub in the year 1980. We know Sybil as the Professor of Divination at Hogwarts, and we know that she has a track record of successful predictions, predicting at the end of the 93-94 school year that Pettigrew would escape and that Voldemort would return. However, she was not always so successful, and in 1980, found herself in a Hogsmeade pub with Dumbledore, interviewing for her post as professor. While her track record was not good at this time, Dumbledore gave her a chance because she was the great-granddaughter of famous seer Cassandra Trelawney. During her interview, a disappointed and unimpressed Dumbledore began to lose interest, when suddenly Sybil entered a trance. In her trance, Sybil spoke of the famous prophecy that we all know explaining that Voldemort would be defeated. It spoke of a boy that would be born at the end of July that possessed the power to defeat the Dark Lord himself. What Dumbledore and Sybil did not know was that Snape, then a Death Eater, was eavesdropping at the door, placing Sybil in great danger from Voldemort. In an effort to protect her, Dumbledore hired her for the position at Hogwarts. The entire prophecy is as follows. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, born to those who have thrice defied him, born as the seventh month dies, and the Dark Lord will mark him as his equal, but he will have power the Dark Lord knows not, and either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord will be born as the seventh month dies. What's interesting about Snape eavesdropping is that he did not hear the prophecy in its entirety, and only told Voldemort what he remembered. Because of this, he missed out very important details, like the fact that Harry would be marked as his equal, and that he would possess unknown power. With this new information, Voldemort came to the conclusion that Harry Potter was the boy that the prophecy was talking about. Lily and James Potter were some of Dumbledore's most powerful supporters, and integral members of the Order of the Phoenix, which meant that Voldemort had them on his radar. Snape, who hated James Potter, probably helped him with this intel as well. The only other option for a child that posed this threat to him was Neville Longbottom, who was born on the 30th of July, but Voldemort firmly believed that it was Harry. This brings us to Voldemort's next move. Partially driven by ignorance, and partially by foolishness, Voldemort believed that he would be able to circumvent the prophecy by murdering Harry. On Wednesday, October 31st, Voldemort travelled to the town of Godric's Hollow, where the Potter family lived. It was here that Voldemort, in an attempt to murder Harry, ended up murdering James and Lily. Voldemort did not go there with the intention of murdering Harry's parents. As to him, they were no immediate threat, he had a very specific goal, and that was to kill Harry. But thanks to Lily's act of sacrificial protection, Harry survived, and Voldemort's mutilated soul was ripped from his destroyed body after his killing curse rebounded back at him. This marked the end of the First Wizarding War, and secured Harry's reputation as the boy who lived. And that's all for this video. Please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, and leave your video suggestions down below. Until next time, you're a wizard, Harry!